Good morning. We are reading again. It's one of our read alouds. I am uh, excited for this next part of the story because I think you will begin to identify the themes going on in our story really well. Uh, we finished up with um, Dolce Domum, parts one and two. Do you remember first part of Home Sweet Home? Mole and Rat were out walking sort of at night, in the dark, in the cold, on their way back to Rat's home when Mole smelled his home. Uh, Rat didn't realize it for a while. And when he did realize it, he went back with his friend. Um, and they, they both were being loyal friends, not wanting to impose on each other. But they went back and they found Mole's front door. The second part of that was going into Mole's home, cleaning it all up, about ready to sit down and have a meal of the things that they had found in the home when there was a knock on the door and the little mice had come and Rat sent one of them out to really get a feast. So they had a feast. Um, it was near Christmas time. Do you remember? It was mid-December. So they, the little mice were out singing Christmas carols, which some of you might be familiar with. Um, we're going to be talking more about narration today. Narration is one of the literary tools that an author uses to move the story along. It, in, it can include a lot of description on what the author wants you to see in your mind's eye. It's when you read a story without pictures. Right now you're getting pictures, so the illustrator is able to put a picture in your mind. But the author often writes with no illustration, and the author wants you to make a picture in your head. I often say, make a movie in your head of what the author is saying. If you can picture it, then you have a much better idea of how the plot moves along. Here we have pictures to help you do that. So listen carefully as the narrator tells more about Mr. Toad in this story. So we're going to be transitioning from a lot about rat and mole, although they'll still be in the story, but we're going to have a lot of illustration and story and narration and dialogue with Mr. Toad. And oh my goodness, He's a naughty one. It was a bright morning in the early part of summer. Oh my goodness. So we have gone from Christmas to summer. That's a big skip. We skipped spring. The mole and the water rat had been up since dawn discussing the joys of boating. They were finishing breakfast when a heavy knock sounded at the door. The mole went to the door and the rat heard him utter a cry of surprise and then he flung the door open and announced, Mr. Badger. The badger strode into the room and stood looking at the two animals with an expression full of seriousness. The hour has come, said the badger at last. What hour? asked the rat uneasily, glancing at the clock on the mantelpiece. Whose hour, you should rather say, replied the badger. Why, Toad's hour, the hour of Toad. I said I would take him in hand as soon as the winter was over, and I'm going to take him in hand today. Toad's hour, of course, cried the mole delightedly. It has been brought to my attention, continued the badger, taking an armchair, that another new motor car will arrive at Toad Hall today. You two animals will accompany me to Toad Hall, and the work of rescue shall begin. Right you are, cried the rat enthusiastically. They set off immediately on their mission of mercy. They reached Toad Hall to find a shiny new motor car parked in the driveway. As they neared the front door, it was flung open, and Mr. Toad, attired in his driving clothes, came swaggering down the steps. Hello, he cried cheerfully. You're just in time to come with me for a jolly, a jolly, 
Toad's words faltered as he noticed the stern look on the faces of his friends. The badger strode up the steps. Take him inside, he said to his companions. And then as Toad was hustled through the door, he turned to the chauffeur in charge of the new motor car. I'm afraid you won't be wanted today, he said. Mr. Toad has changed his mind. And with that, the badger followed the others inside and shut the door. Now then, he said to the toad, when the four of them stood together in the hall, take those ridiculous things off. Shan't, replied toad with great spirit. Take them off him then, you two, ordered the badger. They had to lay toad out on the floor before they could get to work properly, and then the rat sat on him and the mole got his motor clothes off him bit by bit. You knew it must come to this, Toad, the badger explained. You've disregarded all the warnings we've given you. You've gone on squandering the money your father left you. You're constantly getting into trouble with the police. You're giving us animals a bad name in the area. Now, you will come with me into the library, and we there we will have a serious heart-to-heart. Hmm, a heart-to-heart. Do you know what a heart-to-heart is? It's another phrase that we use, another saying and phrase. Let's see if we can figure it out before I tell you, by seeing what the plot is. He took Toad firmly by the arm and led him into the library. About three-quarters of an hour, the badger reappeared, solemnly leading by the paw a very dejected toad. Sit down there, toad, said the badger kindly, pointing to a chair. My friends, he went on, I am pleased to inform you that toad has seen the error of his ways. That is very good news, said the mole gravely. Very good indeed, observed the rat dubiously. If only and he was looking very hard at Toad as he said this, and could not help thinking he perceived something like a twinkle in that animal's eye. There's only one thing more to be done, continued the badger. Toad, I want you to repeat before your friends here that you see the error of your ways. There was a long, long pause. Toad looked desperately this way and that. And then at last he spoke. Hmm. Could you have figured out what a heart to heart was? They went into the library, sat down to a heart to heart. I think they're having a really serious conversation about something because he came back out there. They had come up with some kind of plan. And now Toad has to tell this plan that they came up with to his other friends. No. He said quite firmly, I admit nothing. What? cried the badger. Didn't you tell me just now in there? Oh, yes, yes, in there, said Toad impatiently. I'd have said anything in there. You're so persuasive, dear badger. Then you don't promise, said the badger, never to touch a motor car again? Certainly not, replied Toad. Told you so observed the rat to them all. Very well, then, said the badger firmly. We'll have to see what force can do. You've often asked us three to come and stay with you, Toad. Well, now we are going to. Take him upstairs, you two, and lock him in his bedroom. We'll take great care of everything till you're well, Toad, said Mole, as Toad was hauled up the stairs. No more of those regrettable incidents with the police, Toad, said the rat, as they thrust him into his bedroom and locked the door. They descended the stair, Toad shouting abuse at them through the keyhole, and the three friends sat down to discuss the matter. Shouting abuse is the British way of saying that Toad was angrily yelling at the others and calling them names. Toad must never be left unguarded said the badger firmly. The mole and the rat nodded in agreement. They arranged watches accordingly. At first, Toad resisted their efforts, but as time passed, however, he appeared 
to grow depressed. One fine morning, the rat, whose turn it was to go on duty, went upstairs to relieve Badger. Toad's still in bed, Badger told the rat. Now you look out, rat. When Toad's quiet and submissive, then he's at his trickiest. And with that warning, the badger departed. How are you today? inquired the rat cheerfully as he approached Toad. A feeble voice replied, Thank you so much, dear Ratty. So good of you to inquire. But first, tell me how you are yourself and the excellent mole. Oh, we're all right, replied the rat. Mole, he added innocently, is going out for a run with Badger. Now jump up and don't lie moping there on a fine morning like this. Dear kind rat, murmured Toad, I can't jump up now, if ever. I hate being a burden and I do not expect to be one much longer. Well, I hope not too, said the rat heartily. I'm a nuisance, I know, replied the toad. You are indeed, said the rat, but I tell you, I'd take any trouble on earth for you, if only you'd be a sensible animal. If I thought that, ratty, murmured Toad, then I would beg you to fetch a doctor. Why, what do you want a doctor for, inquired the rat. Surely you have noticed... Of late, murmured Toad, but no, why should you? Never mind, forget that I asked. Look here, said the rat, beginning to get worried. Of course I'll fetch a doctor, if you really think you need one. But you can hardly be bad enough for that yet. Let's talk about something else. I fear, dear friend, said Toad, the talk can do little for me. And by the way, if you do fetch a doctor, would you mind fetching a lawyer too? Boys and girls, do you think Toad really needs a doctor and a lawyer? Why do you think he might be asking for them? (laughs) A lawyer? Oh, gracious me, the concerned rat said to himself as he hurried from the room, not forgetting, however, to lock the door behind him. Outside, he stopped only for a moment to consider Toad's behavior before running off to the village on his errand of mercy. Hmm. So we learned that Badger and Mole had already left to go to the village. Now, Rat has also gone. That leaves Toad alone in his room. You know that Toad is naughty. What do you think Toad might have up his sleeve? Hmm. As the key turned in the lock, the Toad hopped out of bed. Toad watched Rat from his window until he was out of sight. Laughing heartily, Toad dressed quickly in his best suit, filled his pockets with cash, and improvised a rope by knotting sheets from his bed together, tying one end of the rope around the strongest part of his window. Toad slid lightly to the ground and, taking the opposite direction to the rat, marched off lightheartedly, whistling a merry tune. Oh no, Toad is an escape artist. Do you think he's happy about it? How can you tell? Look at that smile on his face. That's a smirk. It was a gloomy luncheon for Rat when the badger and the mole returned. He did it awfully well, said the crestfallen Rat. He did you awfully well, replied the badger hotly. He's got clear away for now, and the worst of it is, He'll be so conceited with what he'll think is his cleverness that he may commit any folly. But we'd better stay here. Toad may be brought back at any moment, on a stretcher or between two policemen. So what does that sound like? His friends are afraid he might get hurt or he might do something and get arrested. Meanwhile, Toad was walking briskly along a main road. A smart piece of work, that, he remarked to himself. And with this thought in mind, he strode along till he reached a little town where the sign of the Red Lion reminded him that he was hungry. He marched into the inn and ordered lunch. He was about halfway through his meal when a familiar sound made him jump. 
The glorious sound of a motor car could be heard in the inn yard. Before long, the owners of the motor car appeared in the inn, eager to get a look at the vehicle. The toad slipped out and sauntered around to the inn yard. There cannot be any harm, he said to himself, in my just looking at it. The car stood in the middle of the yard. Toad walked slowly around it. I wonder if this sort of car starts easily, he said to himself. Next moment, hardly knowing how it came about, he was hurtling along in someone else's motor car. Oh, no. To my mind, observed the chairman of the bench of magistrates, which is like a judge in, in charge of less serious crimes, the only difficulty that presents itself is how we can sufficiently punish this rogue. Hmm. He's been caught by the police. He has stolen a car. He has lied and deceived his friends. Oh, dear. He has been found guilty of stealing a motor car, of driving dangerously, and of gross impertinence to the rural police. Gross impertinence means disrespect. Mr. Clerk, will you tell us what is the stiffest penalty that we can impose on this villain? The clerk scratched his nose. Supposing you were to say 12 months for the theft and three years for the furious driving and 15 years for the cheek, which is also um, a word, British word for rude boldness. That's that same disrespect. Those figures, if added together correctly, total up to 19 years. First rate, said the chairman. So you had better make it around 20 years, concluded the clerk. An excellent suggestion, said the chairman. Prisoner, it's going to be 20 years for you this time. Oh, no. Did you really add up the years? When the clerk scratched his nose, 12 months for the theft, that's one year. Three years for the furious driving, that makes four years altogether. And 15 years for the cheek. Okay, so did you add that all up? Oh dear, Toad's really in trouble now. Uh, what did Mr. Badger, Rat, and Mole do in their attempts to make Toad more responsible? They're really trying to help their friend. They decide to go to his house and lock him up in his bedroom so we, he won't be able to drive. They take turns making sure he's never unguarded. They do not trust him to be alone because they are afraid he's going to run away, steal a car or get a car and get himself in trouble. And guess what he did? Was their plan successful? No. Because Toad tricks Rat into thinking he's sick. Rat leaves Toad unattended to search for a doctor and a lawyer. Toad improvises a rope with his sheets and he's able to escape from his bedroom window. How do Badger and Mole react to that news that Toad escaped? Well, first they're upset at Rat because Rat trusted Toad because Rat is loyal to his friends and he does trust his friends. What happens to Toad in the end? Well, he's found guilty of stealing the car and gross impertinence to the police, which is very great disrespect. And he's sent to prison for 20 years. So what perspective is in the end is this story told from? Well, it's told from Toad's because we know that Toad's, we know his conceited thoughts. Um, when I look at you, I cannot know your thoughts. So if I'm reading a story, I need a narrator to tell the thoughts of somebody. And in this case, the narrator used Toad's perspective 
to tell his thoughts. All righty. Oh, my goodness. Tomorrow we'll learn more about what happens to Toad, the naughty Toad. I told you he was naughty. <laughs>